Agriculture in the United States is a more than $360 billion annual business, but it's in trouble. American farmers are getting older. Their average age is just over 58, and farming in general faces a major labor shortage. Errol Barnett met with some growers to see how they are trying to find a solution with the help of technology from Silicon Valley. He's, uh, he's at Hard Rock, Hard Rock Hill Orchard in Mount Airy, Maryland. Errol, good morning. Good morning. Look, we know that farming is tough work. You've got to get up before dawn. And to take care of cows like these, you have to bring them through this milking machine twice a day. Now, generally speaking, though, this is just not the type of work people want to do anymore. It is becoming more difficult to find all sorts of agricultural labor. Now, farmers I met with recently told me that the key to fix that is artificial intelligence. Look at that bad boy. Yeah, there. Try it. It should be sweet. For just about a hundred years, wow. Gary Rishnotsky's family has been running the Wish fruit farm business. I think my grandfather, if he was alive, would be just totally mesmerized by what the future has turned into. In order to keep his crop healthy, he needs 600 people to harvest 600 acres every two to three days. But finding that amount of labor is becoming unsustainable. We've seen a shrinking labor force and an aging labor force. We actually had fields we were abandoning early in the season, which is a really painful thing for a grower to do. In an effort to avoid losing $20,000 per acre on abandoned fields, Gary partnered with a team of engineers who are working to fully automate the process. We've separated all of the things that a picker is doing into various pieces of the robot. Paul Bissett is the chief operating officer of the company behind it all. We're collecting 50 to 100 images of plant, and all of those images are fed into our AI system in order to tell us, okay, this is a good berry, this is one we want to go after. So you're telling me in real time, this machine is looking at the plant, thinking what to do next based on the imaging, and then executing that action. Exactly. So is this as fast as a human right now? This machine, commercialized, will replace the 30 people that you saw on the field earlier today with Gary. Strawberry farmers are so excited about this harvester, two-thirds of the industry invested more than $5 million into its development, all in hopes to replace the cost of human labor. Some would complain that Machines and artificial intelligence are actually displacing people who want to have these jobs. So you're saying this actually fixes a problem you have. The workforce is not here. We've currently had to turn to guest worker visas to bring people in on a short-term basis to get the crop harvested. This is a global problem, the lack of farm labor. John Deere Combine Advisor. Farming mainstay John Deere has turned to autonomy and is expanding into Silicon Valley. It spent more than $300 million on a tech startup using drone imaging to reduce use of pesticides. The app of IDA helps me to keep track of my cows. And one Dutch company is using TensorFlow, Google's AI platform, to track dairy cow behavior. It's being tested in Augusta, Georgia by Richard Watson. It can determine just by her movements whether she is drinking, whether she's eating, whether she's lying down, standing up, walking. He hopes the app can give him a heads up if his 2,000 dairy cows are sick even before they show symptoms. And alerted me to the fact that there is one animal that is in heat, which is she's ready to be bred, and there are three animals that may have a potential health problem. Watson says the number of U.S. dairy farmers dropped by 50 percent in the past 20 years, yet the number of dairy cows is the same. There you go. Back when it was 80 to 100 cows, the dairy farmer just about knew their animals by name, uh, could tell you just about everything about them. We just can't do that now. Uh, what the technology enables you to do is become a more efficient uh, perhaps diagnose things quicker and, and treat things quicker. Google spokesman Justin Burr says the game changer here is the interpretation of the data. And it's figuring these things out day by day, week by week. The more amount of training data that it gets, the smarter it becomes. It learns the cows, it learns the farmers, and it's able to give more effective information. No technology is a silver bullet. We need a the key question for food sustainability expert Danielle Nirenberg is how this new food tech will change things. It can't all be about profit. It has to be about the long-term viability of the food system and food security for everyone. Back in Florida, where commercialization of these AI bots is still years away, 
they say the consumer is the focus. How excited are you about what you're doing here? Yeah, I'm really excited. Somebody recently asked me what I wanted my legacy to be, and I answered, I said, I think I want it to be that I saved the U.S. strawberry industry. Now, Gary says without automation, you can expect to pay $100 for a bunch of strawberries during the off-peak winter season. And I have to show you this new baby calf born last night. Milk prices are relatively low right now, but Richard tells me any efficiency you add to the mix helps to keep those costs low. Gail? Wow, a new baby calf. That's so precious. Thank you very much. So we got a new prince and we have a new baby calf. Although I have <laughs> always wondered. That's a new skill. I know that that's a stand up I've not seen before. I always wonder about how those baby calves and elephants, how they arrive in the world. I get it for everybody else, but four legs coming out, this seems really complicated to me. And every time I see one, I go, how does that work? Thank you very much. Harold. <laughs> enjoy your Cheerios. Yes, enjoy your friends and family. The calf is here and all is right with you. We'll, we'll get out the whiteboard.